Let's, let's, let's provide some context for this recording. So we're talking about the metaverse, we're talking about virtual reality, and we're talking about the legitimacy of these ontological pastures, the legitimacy of these realms where we're spending more and more of our mind time. You know, some futurists predict that reality, you know, is going to be a very relative word in the future because, again, we're going to be spending a lot of our mind time in electronically mediated worlds and electronically mediated identities and electronically mediated subjectivities. And so the question, the discussion that we're having right now is about the legitimacy of this. Like, is there something fake, artificial, fraudulent about these virtual realms, right? About these increasingly virtual realities. The film Existence by David Cronenberg explored this as well, where in the future we have these virtual reality spaces that become commercialized and people start living in these game worlds, but then there's these terrorists that call themselves realists that are trying to wake people up from the oppression of the game worlds. But meanwhile, people are signing up and they're saying in this world, in the real world, I'm a gas station attendant, but in this virtual existence, Ends game. I'm a secret agent and I'm a king and I'm a hero. And so the criticism of VR is saying, oh, it's escapism. Oh, it's artificial. It's fake. You need to do the inner work and you need to be in the real world. And we give this extra weight to this meat space. Hold on. We give this extra weight to this Euclidean meat space. But I think a, leg I think a legitimate question to ask is why should we be so arrogant to, to, to give more weight to the meat space? Right? The realm within the imaginary realm, the imagination is, is as real as this world. And this world was shaped by what began in here anyway. But then maybe eventually we can just live in these electronically mediated in here's where our symbolic self will be completely unconstrained. Right? In this world we are bounded and limited and sometimes it's shitty, but in that world our aspirations can be literalized. Our symbolic self will have no constraint. And so in some sense, virtual reality and these identities that we take, take on and these worlds that we live in is an example of us summoning, yeah, it's the symbolic self summoning its own literalization, turning our minds inside out through the triumph of virtual reality, of the metaverse, is the imaginary, the symbolic self winning the war against entropy, the symbolic self summoning its own literalization. We are, we are... The, we are, what is it? We're free from race. What from is it? The, we are the spiritual cyborgs. Yeah. You know, like we have, we, have, we have literalized the spiritual impulse of the symbolic self, which is to free itself from the limits of the flesh, free the brave, reckless gods within us in digitally mediated hyperspaces, informed by psychedelic dreams of expansion and freedom. And that part of us is summoning its own literalization, potentially in the metaverse. But for the long run and society, I think it's not very well because who's going to make families, real, true families with real <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. And but that's, that's the good counter argument. The one that says, man, fetch water, chop wood, be in the body, sweat, yeah. farm, yeah. old kids, flesh. Like, yeah, sure, that's where we came and from. But maybe where we're... about the future when well, there will be material... But maybe, like the, maybe the destiny of the human... Get a new sure. Avatar. Maybe, uh, but maybe, again. but who knows? Silicon I'm reading about that. Great sure, body. that's yeah, still, that's still, that's still, skin. that's still an anthro, it's, it's still an anthropomorphic perspective. Yeah. And, yeah. and the metaverse futurist cyberdelic view is, is not anthropomorphic. It's, it's, it, 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 it yeah, it, 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 it doesn't place special emphasis on the way things have been. It, it longs to free itself. Of, of, of the constraints of flesh. It wants to become an object in hyperspace. No and that's why it's There's always no going to connect with that matrix feeling. Correct, exactly. correct, correct. End, this guy's smart, man. <laughs> you see? It's like an inverse ma matrix, I guess. Yeah, yeah in the end, because it turns out into a matrix. we're not but we're creating it ourselves. Well, what... what Human-centric... Human Human-centric <laughs> matrix, basically. Well, it, there, there's a ten... It's a, it's a tension. There's, there's a tense... There's a tense <laughs> duality. There's a... I think, I think there's a tense duality between our humanism, our flesh and blood humanism, and raise children in the farm. Like... Yeah, our, the city, that's I'm our origin. Well, that's our origin center. story. Yeah, but also, <laughs> but also, there's this impulse for for full digit digitization and transfiguration. Well, but but 
it, it, you know, like, like the guy know. that wrote, John Smart wrote the transcension hypothesis, said eventually we're going to become, we're going to create uh, virtual universes with digital consciousnesses that can have like digitally rendered bodies, but that are, that are eternal, that are as gods. And we live in virtual worlds on computational substrates that are atomic in scale. So we, we leave space and time and that that's our biological destiny, not to expand outwards, but to expand inwards until we become a singularity. So we'll copy all our minds on the road. Then maybe the metaverse is the yes. beginning of that, yeah. of identity moving away from the body and moving into this purely symbolic, almost spiritual, but Maybe we can cyberdelic. It's you're incarnating, you know, as an avatar. That's Consciousness freeing itself of matter, maybe is what it is, so right? We'll, in the end, we'll be uh, it's, 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 robots. It's still it's matter. Like the spirituality like can it's, lose it up. But it's matter that's not bound robot, by space time anymore. It's black hole like dimensions of density. You you're you're, you're like femtoscale computational still, universes. You know, I think the one I think doesn't it, have to replace it, another. You know, you can still like do a lot of stuff in the real world. I mean, you, you talk, it's, it's a kind of psychedelic, it's like, a, it's like, it's a psychedelic singularity of sorts, where it's like the outer expansion, the inner expansion, like mind frees itself from matter. And the metaverse and taking on these digital avatars and identities is a step towards that. It's the free, brave, reckless God within us freeing itself from the constraints of matter, space, and time. Well, that's happened when we die. That's maybe that maybe that happens when we die. Maybe, but maybe it doesn't. And maybe the metaverse and the technological singularity is a technologically mediated spiritual transcendence. Maybe, maybe, or we just become art. Yeah, no. We just like we become the slipstream of ones and zeros infusing matter. I mean, Ray Kurzweil's singularity is like the apex of a Beethoven symphony when our capacity for virtual reality and imagination, coupled with our magic, with our with our with our opposable thumb, was sufficient to create the magic of technology, which will continue until the entire universe is at our fingertips. Maybe, maybe, maybe it all ends in a big freaking climax yeah, the omega point, point. <laughs> i don't know yes because yeah. it's still this is the real reality yeah, in the end it turns exactly. out <laughs> maybe exactly yeah. maybe this is already there. there's a lot of maybe yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is like already there. Even I we're just trying to yeah. cool the universe is some kind origin. of weird reality why exactly. it's here it's, already so it's weird. magical we don't know anything we, it's I mean, magical we call it flash, but all we know about it i mean this is all this is a Korean. Well, I mean, this is also information, by the way. We are alphabetic all the way down. We are made of language. This is code. This is software that writes its own hardware. There's algorithms that that inform how these how these cells, div, you know, like like divide and the whole thing. I mean, the whole thing is a, is living wetware. You know, it's it's running code. It, we're algorithmic. If we could see ourselves as algorithmic cascades, like waterfalls of code informing the behavior of matter, we are already code. We are already translinguistic matter. Maybe it is. Maybe that's the 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 cyberdelic kind of woo vision of of the of the hyperspace psychedelic experience where you see everybody and it's like oh shit you're just algorithmic cascades you're just software that writes its own hardware you're just self-organizing assemblages of atoms and miracles concocted in the furnaces of dying stars and now you have an iris that receives this perspective and this view and reflects upon it in a marvelous act of divine self-awareness i mean holy moly maybe we're already in the metaverse it's called the universe you know maybe if there is a god they made us kevin kelly co-founder of wired magazine actually said that he says when we create ai or when we create virtual reality and we start living in these virtual realities we'll have to ha we'll finally have an appreciation of godhood because we'll see once we become creators we'll see how we might have been created you know, 